In this problem, you're asked to calculate the new boiling point of ethanol if a non-volatile non-electrolyte is added to a certain amount of ethanol. The best way to solve this is to use this equation, the change in temperature, which is delta T, equals the boiling point elevation constant, Kb, times the molality times I, which is sometimes called the Van Hoft factor. But I is the total number of ions in the formula. If the solute you're considering is a non-electrolyte, i.e. molecular compound, I is 1. It's important to remember that delta T is not the new boiling point. It's the change in boiling point. So you're going to add delta T to the boiling point of the solvent, in this case, the normal boiling point of ethanol. Kb is the boiling point elevation constant for ethanol, and that's something you could look up in a table. The molality is moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent, and in this case the solute is estrogen. Substituting in the numbers, calculate delta T is 0 0.340 degrees Celsius. Add that to 78.5 to come up with the new boiling point of ethanol. Here's a problem where you're asked to calculate the amount of a solute in order to raise a boiling point a certain amount. Still use the equation we used before, delta T equals KMI. And now we have sort of an algebra problem, solve for x. In this case, the unknown, or the x, is the moles of lead acetate. There are a couple of ways of approaching this algebra problem. But the first thing I will do is cross multiply 0 0.3 uh, times 0.215 to get rid of the fraction. Then multiply 3 times 0.512 to get 1.54. Then divide both sides by 1.54 to get 0 0.042 moles of lead acetate. To determine grams of lead acetate, multiply the moles that was just calculated by the molecular weight or molar mass of lead acetate, which is given to us as 325 grams per mole. So the grams of lead acetate needed to change the boiling point of water by 0.3 degrees C is 13.7 grams. In this problem, we're asked to determine the quantity of solute required to change the vapor pressure of a solvent. The equation you'll need to use is the vapor pressure of the solvent, which is P solvent, equals the mole fraction of the solvent in a mixture times the vapor pressure of that pure solvent. Note, if the mole fraction of the solvent is 1, in other words, 100% pure solvent, then the vapor pressure of the solvent equals the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. But if the solvent is used in some mixture, like in this problem, the vapor pressure of the solvent will be less than the vapor pressure of that pure solvent. But one way to think about this is to work backwards from this equation. Rearranging the equation to solve for mole fraction of the solvent, you'll have the vapor pressure 
of the solvent in the mixture, in this case we're given that number as 453.37, divided by the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, 463.57. 0.978 is the mole fraction of diethyl ether, the solvent, not the cholesterol. We can use this number to determine the mole fraction of cholesterol. Reminding ourselves that the mole fraction total equals one, and the mole fraction total consists of the mole fraction of the solvent plus any solutes in the mixture. In this case, there's only one solute, cholesterol. So we could use this knowledge to determine the mole fraction of cholesterol. Simply subtract 0.978 from one. Use the mole fraction of cholesterol of 0 0.022 to calculate the grams of cholesterol needed. Here is a semi-quantitative problem where you could use the equation change in boiling point equals KMI. The I for the first solution is 3. The I for the second solution is also 3, 1 calcium and 2 acetate. The I for the third solution is 4, 3 nitrates and 1 aluminum. And the I for the fourth solution is 1. Because K is identical for all four solutions, we only need to multiply the molality times I to make a relative comparison. Here is another matching problem, but now rather than being asked about boiling point, we're asked about vapor pressure. We can still use delta T equals KMI to help us determine the relative vapor pressures. Because these are aqueous solutions, K will be the same for all four. Therefore, we can make a relative comparison of these four solutions by simply multiplying the molality times the corresponding I. We have the identical compounds and molality, so M times I is identical to the previous problem. The difference here is vapor pressure. Solutions that boil at a higher temperature generally have lower vapor pressures. Solutions that boil at a lower temperature will have higher vapor pressures. Your answers should be the reverse of the previous problem.